Hey guys, this is our last video in our electrochemistry unit, 14.8. Um, We're going to talk now about the second type of electrochemical cell, which are electrolytic cells. Okay, So these are a little bit different than the galvanic cells or voltaic cells we talked about in the last video. So again, highly recommend that you make flashcards containing the information and comparisons between the two so that you know what they are. I guarantee you, you're going to see one or the other um, come June. So. <clears throat> electrolytic cells, these are cells that use electrical energy to force a non-spontaneous, that's the difference, one of the big differences here with electrolytic cells versus a, a galvanic or voltaic cell, all right, <clears throat> the non-spontaneous chemical reaction to occur, okay. So, whereas our last set of, or our last cell, um, those were spontaneous, okay? We looked at table J. We will not be using table J here um, because this is a forced reaction. So, if you take a look here at this picture, this example of an electrolytic cell, what do you see that is the big difference? Big difference, guys, is you have a battery. The battery is producing the power to get this reaction to go. Okay, so this process is a very, very common process. It's used a lot, okay? It's used for electrolysis, okay, and electroplating. So um, maybe you've had jewelry in the past or know people have jewelry, cheap jewelry, right, where it has like a layer of a certain metal on the outside, like it's gold plated or silver plated, and then there's a cheaper metal on the inside. Um, this is the process they would use. They would use electroplating to then put the one type of metal on the outside to make it look nice on the outside and shiny, but then really down under, it's really um, garbage, okay? So, but again, it's not a, a spontaneous reaction because if you look at table J, things like silver and gold and copper, they're at the very bottom of that list. They're not very active, so they need some other type of boost to get them going. Another example, guys, is your alternator in your car, okay? I can't spell, apparently. Alternator in a car. Okay, what the alternator does is it keeps replenishing the battery. So as you're driving along the road, um, your battery is constantly being used up. The alternator allows that reaction to start to reverse, okay? It replenishes your battery with energy as it drains so that your car can keep going and going and going. That's why if your alternator goes in your car, then everything else, you know, doesn't work, okay? Or it'll only work for a short period of time and you'll have issues driving. Okay, so as we go through, now we start breaking down the specifics of the cell, guys. Note some differences. I'm going to try to remember as much as I can, but you may have questions about this. Um, feel free to ask in class because <clears throat> I guarantee you, you need to know these cells, both inside and out, because one of them, at least one of them, if not both, will be on the regions. So cathode, what's our saying for cathode, right? It still holds true. Red and I can't write, red cat, okay? So this is the electrode where electrons are sent. Okay, this is where in this, the battery, right, is kickstarting the reaction. It's getting the electrons to go to this place. That means if the electrons are being sent here, this is the negative electrode. Okay, this is the opposite of a voltaic cell. So again, you've got to make sure you know the difference. Uh, galvanic or voltaic cells, the cathode is positive. It's not the case here. It's been flipped, okay? Think about why that might be. Well, this is a non-spontaneous reaction. It's trying to be the reverse of the spontaneous. So if a spontaneous reaction has the cathode being positive, the non-spontaneous or the opposite should have it as the negative, okay? This is still, though, the electrode where reduction occurs. So that is still true, okay? Reduction is still taking place, so that means we get our red cat still holds true. The only issue now is that the charge of our electrodes has been flipped. The cathode now is negative, whereas then the anode is going to be positive, okay? So make sure you note that difference. This is why those um, uh, flashcards are super, super important. Okay, 
and I'll kind of maybe simplify it here in, in a little bit toward the end of this video, maybe at least one flash card that you should have. All right, the anode. This is where um, the electrode where electrons are drawn away from. Okay, so they got to come from somewhere. They're coming from the anode in this case. They are drawn away. They're pulled away because of that battery. Okay, so this is then the positive electrode since the electrons, which we know are negative, are being pulled away. Again, it's the opposite of a voltaic cell. Anodes are the negative cell in a galvanic or voltaic cell. Here, they're positive. Okay, so you've got to remember that. Still, though, <coughs> um, sorry, and ox is our thing we want to keep track of. This is still where oxidation occurs. Okay, so and ox. All right. So that's the biggest difference, guys, is that the um, the the uh, electrodes have the opposite signs. Okay, and that this is a forced reaction. This is not spontaneous. Notice there's also no salt bridge. Okay, guys, that salt bridge indicates that, hey, there's two different containers for each half cell. Here, notice, look at the picture that I gave you, right? They're all in the same cell. They're right next to each other. So this is one cell for those because there's no salt bridge, <clears throat> okay? You will always, always, always see a power source. And that is a, I think it was, if I remember correctly, last year's Regents exam, this was a question. How, what's the big difference between electrolytic cell and voltaic cell? Power source, guys, a battery. Either answer, like there has to be a battery because it's not spontaneous. It needs that power coming from somewhere else because this is a forced reaction, non-spontaneous. Okay, I can't stress that enough. So those are the ins and outs of it, guys. You still have half reactions that you have to write. But again, identifying which um, electrode is the cathode and the anode, then everything else falls into place from there. So let's summarize and kind of compare and contrast these two electrochemical cells that we've talked about in the last video and this video. If nothing else, guys, I highly encourage you to write it, to make it a, um, a flashcard with this information on it because this is the big thing you want to make sure to help keep track of each cell. So the flow of electrons. In galvanic, it is spontaneous. That means electrolytic is forced. Again, think battery, right? It's got a battery that gets it going. Now, in a galvanic cell or a voltaic cell, the electrode that is positive is your cathode, right? I showed you the T. However, it's the opposite in an electrolytic cell. It is the anode that is the positive here. Then on the flip side, if the cathode is positive in a voltaic cell, that means the negative is going to be your anode. And it should be the opposite here in electrolytic that this would be the cathode. Now, notice there's a star next to this one, guys. Star it yourself. Remember this. The direction of the electron flow doesn't change. Electrons are always going from the anode to the cathode. Doesn't matter which cell. They always go anode to cathode. Okay, you might be thinking, well, why is that? Well, take a look. It's always going... <coughs> um, from that because that's the one that's the kind of the quote unquote more active one, right? In a voltaic cell, okay, it's going through that and the electrons are flowing, they're being readily given off um, to from the more active metal and they're going to the cathode, okay? So it's going through that. They have that abundance of electrons because they want to readily give them up. Now here in electrolytic, right, it's been flipped. Well, positive. Why? Because <clears throat> the electrons are still going from the anode to the cathode because the anode is becoming positive means it's losing its electrons. So I know it's kind of confusing, especially the first time you're seeing this, okay, but you've got to remember it. You've got to remember the basics of what's going on in terms of each cell. This is why it's so important to have some way to remember it. The reduction half cell in a voltaic cell is the cathode, okay? Reduction's still the same over here. It's still cathode, right? Red cat and ox. That doesn't change either depending on the cell. Guys, so the only thing that changes is that, hey, electrolytic is forced, okay, which then makes these 
flip from where they were in a voltaic cell. That's where it kind of gets confusing is because, hey, now it's a forced reaction. It's the non-spontaneous. Our electrodes have flipped their signs, and that's what kind of makes the rest a little bit confusing. But again, this chart, guys, summarizes all that information. I highly, highly, highly recommend that you at least write this down and study and kind of memorize this information because it's going to make your life a whole lot easier. All right, last thing, guys, fuel cells, galvanic cells for which reactants are continuously supplied. All right, just remember that term, okay, in terms of a fuel cell. All right, so that concludes all of our notes. I'm sure you probably have extra questions and stuff. Make sure you're doing the practice before you take your um, summary quiz, and I have extra practice if you need it. Ask questions. If you're confused, it's a lot of information to take in. Ask questions, all right? I'll see you in the next unit.